from London, England. It's the Cube covering Coupa Inspire 19 EMEA. Brought to you by Coupa. Hey, welcome to the Cube. Lisa Martin coming to you from Coupa Inspire 19 in London. Pleased to welcome one of Coupa's spend setters. Joining me now is. James Wagstaff, the Chief Procurement Officer of Provident. James, welcome to theCUBE. Hello Lisa, nice to be here. So you've had a very busy day. Thank you for taking some time to, to talk to me about Provident, what you're doing with Coupa, but give our audience an overview of Provident, what you guys do and deliver to your customers. Very good, so Provident is a uh, FTSE 250 UK financial services business. Um, it lends money to people without access to mainstream lending. Um, so its real focus is to do that in a responsible caring way. So if you can't borrow money from Barclays or HSBC, then uh, Provident is a company that will, will help you get back to access to that mainstream market. Individuals as well as like small businesses? Consumers, around two million people in the UK currently use Provident, either the credit card or our home credit or our car leasing business. Okay, so how long have you been there? I have been uh, at Provident now since April uh, of 2018. Okay. So we're coming up now to I think 19 months and we put Cooper into the bank, which is the credit card business, in uh, April or April, May. Okay, talk to me though about your journey in business and finance. You, one of the things I read about you is that you were encouraged from an early age to really understand all aspects of a business, from operations, to finance, to marketing, to truly provide value through procurement. Talk to me about the history there that you have. So I'm a big fan of mentor programs. So I think uh, everyone should have a mentor and I lucked into mine, um, a chap called Terry, who for reasons best known to him, took me under his wing. Um, I was quite old when I came to procurement. I was around uh, late 20s, maybe 30. And he had a vision about what great procurement looked like and it was uh, a holistic uh, view. So. Procurement at its worst can be very tactical, very cost focused, and Terry was very uh, focused on the bigger picture, um, about top line growth, not just bottom line. And right from day one, he uh, seeded that in me, and it's, it's been the strength of my career. So I, I owe Terry, Terry Weston, if he's watching, I owe Terry, uh, I owe Terry everything for that. Um, and then I spent the last 10 years as an expat. So uh, pri prior to Provident, I had uh, three years as the group CPO for Vimplecom, which is the Russian equivalent of uh, Vodafone or AT&T, um, who had businesses throughout Soviet Union, CIS and uh, Asia Pac. And then seven years with Huawei, who are uh, China's largest private company, telecoms company. And I was traveling around the world on the sales side, um, facing procurement. So that was a very um, sobering, enlightening experience to see procurement from the supplier side of the table. And I think it's made me a different procurement person as a result in terms of the way that I treat people and relate to people. So that holistic nature um, combined with, uh, I think, a very business-centric view of what procurement should do. Interesting though that you say that, that you said, I got a late start in procurement, but, but your start was founded upon someone giving you very solid advice of look beyond that because this is an element of the business that can, somebody that clearly was seeing how transformative but also how it was important for procurement to partner and understand different requirements and needs within each division within an organization. So sounds like you didn't really grow up in that traditional siloed approach of procurement. I did not and I, I think that for me it makes my life interesting. So I think if you're in, if you're in procurement and the danger is you become quite siloed, you're, you're very narrow. And uh, I did my MBA quite recently while I was traveling just to get that, that bigger perspective. It, it makes the job fun. I mean, I, I think you know you can negotiate contract after contract after contract, but it's the context of what that's doing for the business. Um, and uh, I think when I looked at Cooper as a system, it was with that in mind. So um, looking at Cooper, not from a perspective of what it did for procurement, but how it was uh, for end user customers. So as a service, um, was it really, really simple to use? Did it feel like an Amazon shopping experience? Um, because that drives adoption. And if you can get people wanting to use the system because it's easy, then the data's in the system, and then the data's in the system, you can do something with it. So you're not, you're not fighting that adoption 
issue, issue that you would be on a lot of systems. So if you go to some of the big ERP systems, they can be really hard for, for people to change and adopt. And, and Cooper's not been like that, it's been relatively easy. Interesting that you talk about it is it needs to be as simple as an Amazon marketplace. As consumers, we're so used to that, right? I yep. mean, people transact daily and get fulfillment of whatever product or service they're ordering from Amazon within, sometimes it's within an hour or two. So we have this expectation and this demand. To we your point though about wanting to have software that would be as easy for your teams to, to take up, that consumer effect. Talk to me about that as an influence. Did you know kind of right away, experience with other systems that might be bigger legacy systems that are challenging to get folks to use because they're not that intuitive. Did you know right away when you came in to Provident that I need to have something that is more consumer-like? I knew that we needed a system and because as a, as a regulated industry we had to control our spend. So the fact that we needed a procurement system was a given. So then the choice is what do you buy? I think you don't really need a big ERP unless you really want to spend a lot of money on uh, system integrations uh, and complexity. So you're then into the mid-market space and um, there's a lot of vendors out there that have had a, an on-premise uh, model, been around a long time, but you can feel that when you use it. So I didn't do a paper-based RFP. I think that's probably a terrible way of evaluating systems because you can get a, a function list on paper but that doesn't really tell you what it's like to use. So the procurement process uh, was around video uh, online demos. So getting users into the room, uh, three hours for an online demo, walk through the system. Um, so it was a very non-traditional procurement process to buy a procurement system. Um, and I think at the end of that, I think, I think it was a more valuable process for it. Uh, was that something that was driven by you or was that something that was driven by Coupa? Is that how they deliver that type of experience? It, it was driven by me, but I think it was welcomed by Coupa. I think, I think from uh, the sales guys, I think they do an awful lot of paper-based RFP and I think it's, uh, it's a challenge um, because it's very hard to differentiate on paper. Actually, they, a lot of the systems kind of do the same stuff, but it's not what they do, it's how they do it and you can't, you can't get that out of the paper. You have to see it and feel it and touch exactly. it. Exactly, well one of the things that Rob Bernstein talks about, and he spoke about it this morning, is that the best UI is no UI. And he really talked about what they've done to be user-centric, um, and talked proudly about the adoption that they've had. And you know, it's, we all know, whatever software you're putting in an organization, all these, you know, whether it's marketing, finance, operations, sales, if people aren't going to use it, it's not going to be able to deliver the value that whoever purchased it and brought it on needs it to do. Talk to me about that user centricity. Did you see and feel that right away in those demos? I think if, if you're a procurement guy, you have suppliers every day send you certain messages, um, and those messages are fairly consistent around you know, delivering value and solutions. Um, I mean, Rob's great, he's a, he's a bit of a force of nature, um, you've got to say that. Um, but what I like about it is that he's got a very clear sense of vision about what the system should be. And I, I think he's done a great job of getting that throughout the company, top to bottom. And to date, um, we felt that. So uh, normally what happens is you buy the software license, you sign the agreement, there's lots of love and care, and then kind of the vendor disappears a little bit um, and you're on, you're on your own. And um, to date, Cooper done a great job. Um, we got Damien Pennell, who's our um, a success manager. He's, he's, I get the sense that he really cares about whether the system's going to do what it promised to do and how do we get more value out of it. Some of it is about selling more licenses because Cooper have got other modules that they want you to buy, but that's kind of okay. If, if the modules are delivering more value, then you don't mind paying for them. Um, but even the modules we own, um, there is a real sense of, are you exploiting it to the max? Um, and that's, that's pretty cool. What are some of the key values that you have gleaned so far in just the, what, maybe six months or so that you guys have been using the platform? So I, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm quite surprised at the extent to the insights, the, the value I'm getting out of the insights. So as an example, um, and I'll be honest, I, uh, Cooper told me that said you, your, um, your spend through catalog is 27% and your industry top quartile is 95. Um, and I kind of went, nah, I don't believe you. And then they said your electronic invoicing 
could be 77% and you're currently single digits. And I went, nah, I don't believe you. And then through the community, um, we spoke to Co-op, who were another Cooper customer, and, and, and Mali there was saying, uh, no, we, we're doing it. We're at this, we're at 95% or 97% even. And I went, well, how are you doing it? And she just taught me through how they sell it to suppliers and how, in my head, the reluctance to adopt actually evaporated because um, she was able to sell the idea to suppliers, sell the value add. So she didn't force them to do it. She just said, this is what you're going to get out of it if you do it this way. And, she, and you know, she's genuinely got to 97. So what it's done for me is it's removed my own blockers in my own mind. You know, in my own head, you can't do this. Well, insights and speaking to other communities, says, yes, I can. So it's, it's opened my... Uh, change my targets, change what I think is possible. Um, and I think that's, that's cool. If you look back to the beginning of your journey in procurement, business and finance, when you were given this great advice, like be open-minded, understand how different parts of the business work. From, from then to where you are now and what you're able to deliver in just a short time, leveraging Coupa, would you believe you've been able to go from there to there? Uh, yeah, so, so Terry, Terry would always say to me, you know, if, you, if you're going to negotiate a deal, before you even pick up a contract, you would spend an hour with the business owner or the techie or whoever it is, and you just whiteboard at a technical level what the solution is. I think that years and years and years of doing that, of going deeper into technology and software and integration and, and through deal after deal, deal after deal, when you come to run the project, um, to implement Cooper, you have that as a foundation. So you're not, you're not just at the surface and relying on you know, other technical people because you're lost when you get to this level of detail. You've already got a little bit more depth. So um, I think that, that was the big spin-off in a way that um, you know, you're able to have more uh, in-depth conversations at a technical level, which you need to unblock stuff. So of some of the news that came out today, they talked about what they're doing to expand Coupa Pay with American Express. I was just talking with Barclays. Barclay Card's been on that for a little while. Looking at the, the payment space, for, for instance, on the BDC side, we have this expectation as consumers, we can do any transaction, we can pay bills. It hasn't been as, on the B2B side, it hasn't been as innovative. Some technology gaps, large scale. What do you see Coupa in that respect with what they're doing with Coupa Pay? Do you see that influence from the consumer side that might eventually become an important part of what you're able to do at Provident? I do, I haven't, we haven't enabled Cooper Pay, so I'm, I'm not in a position to talk authoritatively about it. In terms it, of I, the, taking the consumer kind yeah. of demand? I, so I look at the one-time use credit cards and I'm really quite excited about what that could do and I, I kind of get the business sense and the use case behind that. So um, that's certainly on our radar. Um, I like the risk aware products um, as well using the, um, uh, big data, uh, the big data and AI stuff. So um, there's a few things in the roadmap that I've got my eye on. Uh, we're deploying expenses module um, in December, January, so that'll keep us busy on that. Um, and then we need to route six months of data through Cooper so that we've got enough of a, a data pool to do the analytics. So. Um, We've got a busy roadmap, that's for sure. For last question for you, James, for peers of yours, whether they're in financial services industry or not, that are facing similar challenges and opportunities to transform procurement, what's your best advice? Mm. Go and spend a few years as a supplier. Um, I think procurement suffers a little bit from people who have only ever been in procurement, and I think that different perspective um, would be enormously powerful. So I think if we could get more marketing people and more lawyers and more different people from different professions into procurement, I think it would give you a broader perspective um, rather than a, I've grown up in procurement the last 20 years sort of perspective. So go and get that holistic um, global view would be my, uh, uh, my suggestion. Well, James, that's great advice. I think for anybody, anywhere, and I'm sure Terry would be proud to hear you say that. <laughs> I'm sure he would. Thank you so much for joining me on theCUBE and sharing with us what Provident is doing with Coupa. We appreciate your time. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you, Lisa. Excellent. For James Wagstaff, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from Coupa Inspire 19. Thanks for watching.